afternoon all um, chess on YouTube is a bit like the Wild West in terms of anyone can vote um, any old stuff is put up there uh, you know official chess sites tend to stick with classical you know games from classical time controls FIDE you know time controls usually you know one day a game but FIDE have been you know doing other events sometimes like Blitz which also are very interesting and there's some uh, tournaments like Amber Blindfold uh, and stuff which which also test GMs in other ways so the classical game is not the only game and the most extreme form of chess is bullet chess and I was actually quite shocked uh, looking now at a previous video I've done just recently against a FIDE master Telos uh, the number of views it has got on YouTube uh, so first of all can any of you explain why a bullet game annotated would be of any interest. I mean, may maybe I did annotate it more interesting than I I'd imagined, but I'm a bit shocked actually uh, by the feedback on that and and the comments. I mean, I suppose it's more impressive to be able to play a good uh, bullet game. Uh, now this one, I was very lucky today against Ninja, who crushed me yesterday, and that uh, dual commentary bullet match also received a lot of attention on YouTube again. So anyway, um, given that I, I, I got my revenge a bit on Nijat today, let's have a look at this game. I started with C4. In a previous encounter, I think I lasted about 10 moves with E4 the other night um, against his Karakhan. So I thought C4, and after C6, I don't mind this position in Blitz, uh, this kind of gambit of the C4 pawn. That's the first gambit, because what I love about this position of the knight f3 d takes c4 is I like the idea <coughs> pardon me of Finch attacking the bishop playing for e4 and e5 and then like knight e4 and stuff you know maybe later like this uh, queen here with an attack and I saw this kind of pattern actually uh, I think in a five minute game while observing on, on the ICC one day between um, some high rated players uh, so maybe there's a lesson there as well that um you know, sometimes maybe it's just good to to observe um, high-rated players playing five-minute chess just for a few ideas. But a lot of these gamuts will not scale up um, to longer time controls. But in this case, um, back in the distant past, dim distance past, I played in one of Adam Ralph's um, FIDE tournaments, which he was organising. And one of my only uh, results in one of the vicious all-play-alls uh, was drawing with uh, a 2400 Fide player with a similar sort of gambit in the Catalan against the Slav because the Slav, Slav is very very popular and often uh, they do take on c4 so maybe this gambit does have some scalability you know away from bl bullet away from five bullet scalability to even longer games uh, but often I think that there are uh, example games um, where where black uh, does you know hang on to the material and and get a very good game it's it's a bit of a double-edged um, sword but um, here it seemed to work uh, very well in fact in in uh, the recent match against uh, Nisha I think he, he did uh, win the pawn and he won uh, later but here uh, was what happened here which was so disastrous for black um, you know basically uh, some of black's difficulties immediately after Bishop G2 uh, will be for example Knight E5 putting pressure on the diagonal and then you know maybe knight takes b5 as well as c6 being under fire so there is pressure in this variation uh, but what i really look forward to is is getting the center and that is a good thing you know no matter what the con time control is this fight for the center in a way you know black's release control a bit of e4 with this d takes c4 so that 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 is something scalable in principle you know central control so after e6 knight e5 uh, something very interesting about this position he chooses this knight to challenge this guy so knight fd7 asking the knight a question I think I think a recent commentator on a video I saw called it that asking the knight a question so the knight's been asked a question like what to do I suppose now if the other knight had moved then c6 would be on so that's probably why Nijat chose uh, knight fd7 uh, now you know it's a bullet game and you want dynamism and you want to develop your pieces without actually having to um, uh, do much. And here, uh, a logical move seems to be f4. 
uh, which would increase the scope of the bishop, you know, on knight takes, f takes. Of course, uh, I'd be looking forward to things like e4 and maybe even queen h5. And this pawn wedge would stop a knight on, on f6. The problem usually with that setup is the center is a bit fragile actually to c5s, where e5 might be weak later. So, in this position, Nijat played f6. And here I did a very cheeky move. And I suppose there, there is some cultural significance here again about where you pick up ideas. I remember this uh, master game on TV, which I used to really love with commentary actually. Probably that's one of the inspirations of my commentary videos. The master game featured on, on TV had at the time two of the leading players at the time. Uh, Adams uh, was white against Nigel Short, a French defence. I think it was a key decisive game. I remember Short sacrificing his knight by playing a move like f5, but he was black. So he just left his knight to be captured. I remember it being really neat. So I thought, yeah, f4 here. Pilo, peels open the f file. Um, sorry, if I play e4 here, I'm sacrificing now. I'm offering to sacrifice a whole knight just, just to get peel open the f file. Sort of analogous to that game which was once, you know, on TV. And it's probably unsound. I mean, what does it do apart from uh, get the f-file? But, you know, black, if black's not casting, the position becomes a bit trickier. And especially at this fast time control, if the position comes trickier, it's probably worth investigating anyway, even if it was a long game, uh, to see is this at all dangerous. And it's not just, that, you know, the, the queen can also come to g4, not just h5, which we'll find is very useful now in this game. Mishat, uh, my grandmaster opponent, he takes on e5, and f takes e. Now, just to prove or otherwise, actually, let's do a clinical engine check here with Houdini. It will probably say this is absolute rubbish. Actually, it went actually very quickly from minus one point something to point four zero. Now it's gone back to minus one point e5, one point one two or something, um, and it's actually giving. Uh, knight takes e5 here as as one route in the position, or knight c5. So trying to smash open uh, the center straight away and give back the piece. So knight takes e5 uh, takes, or maybe maybe there's something stronger with queen h5. No, it takes. So the idea of this counter piece sacrifice is just to get the queens off, I guess. So. What did Nijat do? He didn't do this immediate counter sacrifice. Amazingly, the engine's giving knight c5 or knight takes e5. So that's a bit of a surprise. While the queen's on d1, it's still possible to do that. And on check, there'll be a knight, F, knight g6, I think. Actually, let's just check that out as well. Uh, just, just throw in a check there. So if queen h5, I, I suppose knight g6. Yeah, knight g6 is the move. So black could have played that. Um, maybe I, sh I hope Nijet doesn't see this video for next time. So he played actually g6. And I wonder now how the evaluation is shifting just with the move g6. It's actually, technically, it's minus 0 0.35 here. Because there are possibilities all of a sudden, like bishop h3 as the top candidate. And queen g4 is the second candidate, get getting it down to just minus 0 0.54, believe it or not. So what on earth? has happened here in terms of dynamism of the position. I thought it looked quite interesting, this position. Well, the main benefits of this central control have been revealed. The black king's still in the center. There's a target on e6. This f file's dangerous. And I think Nijak goes wrong again. I think this is getting uh, really, really bad after his next move, queen e7. I suspect the engine evaluation is now in White's favour after Queen e7. It was a very tricky uh, position to play. It's it's about equal, no slightly advantage to White now after Bishop g5, with h5 being the only move virtually. Otherwise, it's all really bad. Queen g7, Queen e6, it's all really bad for Black after Queen e7. So really, this was a critical blunder. If he had played uh, Knight b6 or Bishop c8, he might have been able to hold this position. Uh, so Bishop g5, say Queen d7. Not not taking this pawn apparently. This would be kind of dangerous. If check King H one, this is actually a crushing position, uh, apparently. Say say Queen takes E five, Bishop F six. 
Yeah, because because that's that's the problem tactically. There's there's a, f a forking line because that G6 didn't really help actually. So it seems I'm I'm uh, roughly theoretically becoming about equal now after Queen E7, Bishop G5. I must be doing very well actually. So it's funny um, the dynamics. And you'd assume everything you know from Blitz or from TV is is rubbish uh, in terms of scalability, but maybe you know that's not always the case. Um, and ov obviously, ev even in long games, we know that Alexander Alakine and Mikhail Tal, they they often played attacks which were later found to be unsound with scrupulous uh, you know analysis. You know the best defenses were found, but in the context of a real game with a real time limit. Uh, people have no access to those amazing resources which might save or counterattack positions. There's no time to find such resources. And here, it's all my pieces, if you look at them, they're in a team. It's, it's very, very good teamwork for all the pieces striking in the black position. You know, they're all very aggressive. The rooks are connected. By contrast, you know, these rooks are not connected. This bishop's hemmed in. Black's grabbed the pawn and paying the price, it seems, over there. It's it's not a pretty picture, so Nijat may be a bit upset by position. Plays um, plays knight takes e5, which doesn't really help. He loses a piece back, and he can't really take on e5 now because uh, of bishop f6. Uh, so that would be forking, you know, queen and rook. So really, his king's still stuck in the center. He plays bishop c8, and things start getting really bad now. After bishop f6, he's forced to move his rook. And now rook a d1, I'm threatening actually the nasty uh, rook d8 here. He plays knight d7, which has a slight problem. The weakness of the last move, he's just blocked in the bishop, which is no longer protecting e6. So I can take on e6. And the problem here now is that he's just losing a rook. And it starts to get quite horrific now. Because now I start to put attention on f8. Look at f8. So I play bishop g7. And... I thought I blundered here now because I played rook f8 thinking you know, I'd just take on f8. But then I noticed something about rook f8. After bishop takes f8, I noticed something stronger, thankfully, that actually his knight was also defending uh, e6 when his knight was on f8. So I can take now on e6. So I was delighted to get this position. I'm just getting all my material back and loads more uh, from that initial knight sacrifice. After queen e7 check, I think he offers a draw, which I, I ignore. And he resigns, but here it's total, you know, devastation. If King F7, Rook D7, uh, so he just resigned here. So I got lucky today, and I managed to come second actually in the war zone uh, today because I also beat another good player, Jalk, but lost to Jalk in in the second game. But yeah, let's have a look in overview and summary. So really, there's a few questions actually about the role of Bullet, you know, Blitz, uh, watching, you know, Blitz on other sites, watching Blitz on TV. And you know, is is the classical um, time control the only source of enjoyment for observing uh, games of interest? Well, I think as 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 the YouTube uh, video feedback on on Blitz games anyway has has continually shown, for example, on this channel that even five minute games can be of of great interest. Um, I think the problem with uh, you know the classical games is if you you're not really aware of the thinking behind moves you just you just get to play through the games for most people um, you know it's not as interesting as having the thoughts laid out with commentary and it's it's well known that an annotated game is worth a lot more than an unannotated so you get this kind of paradox where maybe you know the even the bullet games if they're sort of well annotated uh, then people find it more interesting to see the ideas that were present uh, so b5, you know, it's positional as well sometimes. You know, black's going to just sometimes get a big knight here and and, and later undermine the center. But it, it doesn't work out at all in this game because there was a spanner thrown into the works, namely this, this knight sack, uh, which needed to be countered virtually immediately for black to be okay. But instead, um, this kind of hammerhead in the center of, of pawns was just left which means now after g6 there's there's a lot of targets the biggest weakness in black's position was targeted e6 so apparently the two moves theoretically were bishop h3 and queen g4 so i managed to hit on one of those queen g4 and black's in real tr trouble now 
after queen e7, bishop g5, he doesn't really want to play a move like queen g7 and land queen e6. And this counter sack doesn't seem to, you know, do much uh, because the queen cannot take on e5 because of bishop f6. So all in all, it's a total disaster from what started as a gamut that I've had pleasant memories with, then another knight sack that I've had a pleasant memory of watching something on TV from. And it's all like put together. It's, it's like soup being put together from different uh, sources. Um, but, you know, I, I, I had some enthusiasm uh, yesterday to talk about dynamism and in particular to start going over some of Alkine's uh, more sacrificial games where he sacked pawns in the opening, etc. He's played games of joy because I think in the Russian uh, school of chess, uh, they've chosen their founders, Shigorin and, and Alkine, based on dynamism and creativity and creating works of art, not just the sake of just winning games, you know, technically with technical precision, but creating sort of art, you know, and then, you know, entertaining games, original games, innovative games. Um, and so I, I, I have this, always this keenness for, for watching uh, dynamic games, whatever the source is. So it's, it's reflect here. It just, it just shows uh, there's a pressure, you know, so much pressure on the black position that even a grandmaster, especially at this time control, can, can really, you know, badly go wrong, like in this game. So anyway, um, comments or questions on YouTube. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, subscribing is free and easy, so uh, please, please subscribe. Thanks very much.